Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going to be taking a look at the aerodynamics of GT3 cars in ACC. We'll explain what the aerodynamics impact and how you can change them to give your sim racing a boost. We're also going to analyze the effects of different aero setups with the Track Titan platform where you can analyze your own driving for free and get a couple of extra insights if you sign up using code AERO. The aerodynamics of a GT3 car function to give it more grip by generating downforce at higher speeds. Parts like the rear wing and the front splitter use the air resistance to push the car into the tarmac, making it stick to the road more easily. The aerodynamics of a car impact the speed and handling in a number of ways. Firstly, the downforce generated by the car's aero at high speeds can improve grip and stability, allowing you to take corners at higher speeds. The rear wing is mostly responsible for supplying the rear wheels with grip by generating that downforce at those higher speeds. A higher angle of attack of the rear wing generates more downforce, making the car more stable but also increasing drag and reducing its top speed. So a balanced approach is often needed as you don't want to be held back on straights but you also want to have some grip in those high speed corners. The front splitter is mostly responsible for supplying the front wheels with the grip. Not all splitters can be adjusted, but when they can, a higher angle of attack supplies more downforce to the front. This is great in moderation as it can help to make the car more responsive through those high speed corners, but too much can cause it to start oversteering. Like most parts of a setup, the aerodynamics are all about finding the right balance for the track you're driving on. You'll want enough of an angle in the rear wing to give your rear tires the grip they need, but not so much that it starts to slow you down on the straights. And the same goes for that front splitter. You want to set it just right so that you can get through those high speed corners without understeering, but you also don't want to spin out in them. So aero is all about finding the right balance. And to achieve this, you'll want to look at the track you're gonna be driving on. A rule of thumb is that you'll want to minimize the impact of your aerodynamics on the track with long straights, as a higher angle of attack on your wing and splitter will slow you down in segments where you don't really need that grip. Now when you're on a track with a lot of corners where the top speed on those straights is not necessarily such a big deal, you're gonna want to increase the arrow a little bit as it will help your car to grip the road better during those more high speed corners. Our advice to set up your arrow so that it suits you best is to drive a couple of laps on the circuit in question and feel if your car feels under or over steery especially in fast corners. When you have a general idea of the over or under steeriness of your car, you can start tweaking the aerodynamics. Now, if the car feels over steery during the fast corners, you might want to reduce the angle of the front splitter a little bit or increase the angle of the rear wing, whichever is possible. Now, if the car feels under steery in those faster corners, try the opposite. Maybe a higher angle on the front splitter or a lower angle on the rear wing. Now, if your car feels pretty good from the get-go, you might want to start experimenting with reducing the angle of the rear wing, especially if there's some long straights on the track. This way, you might be able to increase your top speed and get a quicker lap time in. But change up your setup incrementally and test it out so that you don't end up with an unstable car. Now to test out the difference aerodynamics make, we've driven quite some laps at a complicated track in terms of aero setup, spa Francorchamps. This circuit has got two massive long straights where aero is not that big of a deal, but there are also quite a lot of fast corners in which you can benefit a great deal from that aero. Now I'm gonna compare a lap on the Track Titan platform where we've used a lot of aero, which is shown in orange, to a lap where the aero was reduced, which is shown in blue. The first big difference we see is through Eau Rouge, where the orange car with more aero has a way easier time keeping the speed up while turning through this magnificent segment. 
while the blue car has to let go of the throttle to keep within track limits. And we can see the result of this because the orange car with more aero starts on the straight after it with a lot more speed. But the blue car speed is increasing at a much faster pace, resulting in about the same top speed at the end of the straight. In the hairpin of segment 7 we can see another notable difference, especially in terms of minimum speeds. The orange car with more aero can turn through this corner with almost 15 km per hour more because of the grip that is supplied to the rear wheels by the wing. And the last notable difference I wanted to point out is on Blanchiment, where we find a kink in the road during a high speed section. The orange car with more aero has a much easier time keeping its speed up while getting through this kink, because the blue car with less aero has to lift off the throttle to stay within track limits, while the aero on the orange car makes it stick to the road way easier through this kink. So the main difference in driving these two aero setups was that the car with a very little rear wing felt very very loose during the faster corners and was prone to oversteer, making it a lot harder to push to its limits with a lot of confidence. While the more aero heavy car was easier to drive, it did feel sluggish in the acceleration on the longer straights. So as we've said before, finding a good balance between the two is key. And that's a great point to round out the video on. Aero is all about balancing your grip in the faster corners and speed on the straights. Remember that you'll only really feel the benefits of your aerodynamics at higher speeds because in slower corners there isn't enough air resistance to push your car into the tarmac and you'll have to rely on mechanical grip. If you're feeling oversteer in those high speed corners, use a little less front splitter or some more rear wing. It's of course the other way around if you experience understeer in those corners as you'll want more front splitter and less rear wing. Try to minimize your rear wing without losing grip to make yourself just that little bit faster on the straights, but don't make your car unstable. Now let us know if we missed anything in this video in the comments down below. Check out the Track Titan platform if you want to easily analyze your own sim racing and we hope to see you in the next video.